Hi folks, a few months ago I made a video explaining Melbourne's Richmond Junction and I was quickly flooded with requests to do an explainer on the much more complicated area around North Melbourne and Southern Cross, so here it is. Southern Cross is the largest railway station in Victoria and is the central point of the V-Line regional network. It's also the terminus for interstate standard gauge passenger trains and the majority of suburban electric trains pass through here too. Prior to its extensive rebuild in 2004 when it got the big wavy roof, this station was known as Spencer Street, which was a geographically sensible name taken from the major city street right outside. The new name, Southern Cross, is considerably less geographic, with the station being 88.6 light years away from the nearest point of THE Southern Cross. The station is broadly split into two sections. On the eastern side are platforms 1 to 8, which are the country platforms used by V-Line. Then 9 to 14 are suburban platforms, which allow through running to the south towards Flinders Street. Finally, on the western side, we have platforms 15 and 16, which are another pair of country platforms. Most of the country platforms are routinely operated in two halves, displayed with an A after the platform number at the south end, and B at the north end. There is also platform 8 south, hiding away under the Collins Street Bridge, which is really a separate platform entirely. A short distance to the north is North Melbourne Station, which is relatively simple with six through platforms. North Melbourne is, of course, located in the suburb of West Melbourne, a few hundred metres south of the actual suburb North Melbourne. At the northern end of the platforms is the old brick concourse, while the southern end features a much larger modern concourse opened in 2009. Despite its size and proximity to the city, North Melbourne isn't a hugely busy station in terms of local passenger boardings, recording fewer annual touch-ons than several outer suburban stations. But it is an important shoulder station, allowing connections outside the CBD, and is especially useful for people changing between trains that run direct and those that run via the city loop. So, we're going to start over here at the easy end, then work our way back to Southern Cross. The three pairs of lines running through North Melbourne are all unidirectional with left hand running. The blue lines are the up lines heading towards the city, while the down lines running away from the city are in red. The remaining track in grey is bidirectional. These lines at the bottom of your screen are part of the regional rail link, which opened in 2015 to separate V-line trains from suburban trains, and it doesn't have any platforms here, something that was a bit controversial at the time of construction. I'll talk more about the RRL a little bit later when we look at country trains. That bi-directional line running in amongst the RRL tracks is a freight line, which I'm going to colour orange. It provides a connection between various points around the docks and yards for freight trains heading to the southeast suburbs and Gippsland, and it also provides access to some passenger train stabling yards. The pair of lines running through platforms 1 and 2 are known as the East Suburban, 3 and 4 are the Main Suburban, and 5 and 6 are the Through Suburban. On the upside of the station, a pair of entrances to the underground city loop drop down between the up and down tracks of the east and main lines. These two tunnels join into a single track underground a short distance later and curve away towards Flagstaff Station. On the down side of the station is the area known as North Melbourne Junction, and this is where the lines to Upfield and Craigieburn split off from the other lines heading out towards Footscray. Now before we go any further, I need to clarify that North Melbourne and Southern Cross both have a lot of yards and sidings all over the place. This diagram was going to get extremely complicated if I included them, and is kind of beyond the scope of this video anyway, so I'm only showing main running lines here. I've also excluded some crossovers which exist for the sole purpose of accessing yards and sidings. So this is a big flat junction, with the exception of this one flyover here. However, it doesn't create as much separation as you might think, branching off the through lines on the flat here, then joining the Craigieburn line on another flat junction just before Kensington. Back over at the upside of the station, the six suburban tracks pass under the North Melbourne flyover and through Franklin Street Junction before heading over to the Southern Cross suburban platforms. Now, we're going to focus on what suburban trains do in this area first, then we'll come back and tackle the countryside of things. The Werribee and Williamstown lines are fairly straightforward, coming through platforms 13 and 14, then running on the through suburban through North Melbourne 5 and 6 before heading out towards Footscray. You'll notice there are quite a few crossovers at both North Melbourne Junction and at Franklin Street, which allow quite a bit of flexibility in the case of disruptions. In fact, all trains running through here have the ability to be sent via a different platform if required, something that can't be said for other large stations like Richmond, South Yarra or Footscray. Next up we have the northern group of lines, which all share trackage through Southern Cross, Flinders Street and around the city loop. The PTV network map uses a single colour for the groups as a whole, which is a bit annoying for a diagram like this because we have the Sunbury line in yellow, yellow for the Craigieburn line, and the upfield line is shown in yellow. 
The Sunbury line comes in from Footscray and normally runs on the main suburban through North Melbourne Platform 3. On weekends and weekday mornings, it continues into the city loop, running around clockwise and reappearing on Southern Cross Platform 11, before heading back out on the down main suburban through North Melbourne Platform 4. On weekday afternoons, the Northern Group operates anti-clockwise around the loop. A bit further out at South Kensington, there is another set of crossovers which allow Sunbury trains to run through North Melbourne on the through lines if required. Next up, the Craigieburn line comes in from Kensington and normally takes the low-level route to the East Suburban, running into North Melbourne Platform 1, then, during clockwise running, entering the loop and merging with Sunbury Line trains at the Underground Junction. After rounding the loop and leaving Platform 11, Craigieburn trains split off from Sunbury trains and return to the East Suburban, running back out through Platform 2 at North Melbourne. The Upfield Line comes in from Macaulay and joins the East Suburban on a flat junction, then takes the same route as Craigieburn trains around the loop. So as you can see, the three Northern Group lines come together in a single track through the loop and back out to Southern Cross, or the other way around on weekday afternoons. And this makes the Northern Group tunnel extremely busy. In its current form, it's pretty much at capacity, with very little room to move in case of delays or disruptions. It's amazing to think just over a decade ago, the Werribee line also ran into the loop here. As I mentioned earlier, the crossovers on either side of the platforms do create some good flexibility, and one example of that is if there are no Sunbury trains nearby, the Craigieburn line can use platforms 3 and 4, avoiding the flat junction with the upfield line, although trains travelling in the same direction still have to come together for the city loop. Things are going to get a bit easier when the Melbourne Metro Tunnel opens in a few years' time, which will take the Sunbury line away from this area, freeing up capacity for more trains on the Craigieburn and upfield lines. You might notice I haven't shown anything running over the flyover here yet, and actually it doesn't get used that much by regular services. There are a handful of Craigieburn trains that run over it to platforms 5 and 6, but you can't access the city loop from there, so they continue on the through lines over to Flinders Street. The flyover is also often used by special trains running to the Flemington Racecourse line, which branches off the Craigieburn line at another flat junction at Newmarket, and empty trains run up there on a regular basis to stable. So back over at Southern Cross, the remaining suburban platforms are used by the other three city loop groups, with the Clifton Hill group on platform 9, the Burnley Group on 10, and the Caulfield Group on 12. Note that Platform 9 runs into the loop only and isn't accessible from North Melbourne. The middle track between Platforms 10 and 11 is often used by empty trains, which sometimes wait there for a path between regular services. There is some flexibility here to use alternate platforms when required, although the position of the loop entrances does limit this quite a bit. So that's basically it for suburban trains. Now let's have a look at everything else. And I'm just going to turn off that underground trackage for a moment to clear things up a bit. Now, it's worth noting that Melbourne's suburban trains are electric, powered by 1500 volt DC overhead wires, while all V-Line regional trains are diesel powered. This yellow shaded area is electrified, while everything else is unelectrified. Notice that this part of the freight line has wires, allowing access to a stabling yard and train wash, which are among the sidings I'm not showing here, to keep it simple. V-Line trains on the Geelong, Ballarat and Bendigo lines, as well as the long distance routes beyond those cities, run on the dedicated regional rail link through Sunshine and Footscray, approaching North Melbourne parallel to the Werribee line. At the oddly named Spion Cop Junction, the RRL splits in two on the flat. Note there is a limited connection with the high level lines to Kensington here, and also that two of the RRL tracks cross the freight line on the level. These lines run through a series of tight curves, then up over the North Melbourne flyover, and from here it's possible to access any of Southern Cross platforms 1 through to 8, including 8 South. The other route makes a much straighter and quicker approach, running into platforms 15 and 16. This is also where Gippsland trains depart from, being the only V-Line route that departs Southern Cross to the South. The only V-Line trains that still run through North Melbourne on the suburban lines are trains to Shepparton and Seymour, which run along the entire length of the Craigieburn line. They typically run from platforms 7 or 8, joining the East Suburban Lines at Franklin Street Junction. This creates a conflict with Upfield and Craigieburn Suburban Trains, and there's a second conflict with the Upfield Line at North Melbourne Junction. It's amazing to think that prior to the RRL opening in 2015, Geelong, Ballarat and Bendigo Trains also run on the Suburban Lines through here, creating a really problematic junction, especially for Geelong Line Trains which had to make their way all the way over to the through Suburban. Removing most V-Line trains from this situation was a major benefit of the RRL, as well as the separation further out. Back to the present day, while there are tendencies to operate certain V-Line trains off particular platforms, 
Most can run off any platform, given that all routes come together on the RRL anyway. If you look at the V-Line departure screens at Southern Cross, you'll see trains spread out all over the place, and last minute platform changes are very common. This can be a little bit chaotic for passengers, especially if you have to run 500 metres from 2B over to 8 South, but it does provide a lot of operational flexibility. Now there's one line I haven't mentioned yet, and that is the Albury line. The Albury line is different to every other V-Line route in that it operates on 1435mm 4 foot 8.5 inch standard gauge, as opposed to the 1600mm 5 foot 3 broad gauge used on the main Victoria network. This is because it operates on the interstate line to New South Wales, and it's also the only V-Line train that operates outside Victoria, although only for the last 2 kilometres of its 304 kilometre journey. Now, it's not shown on the official map, but the standard gauge runs alongside the Craigieburn line to Jakarta, then along the goods lines to Albion, and down past Tottenham Yard, South Dynan Locomotive Depot, and into North Melbourne. It joins the RRL tracks on the downside of the flyover, yes, another flat junction, running into Southern Cross on dual gauge. If you've been living under a rock, this is where three rails are used to allow trains of two different gauges to operate, sharing a rail on one side. Here I'm showing the dual gauge track in green, with the small amount of standard gauge only track in blue. Everything else is broad gauge. So you can see that all standard gauge trains operate out of platforms 1 and 2, and as well as the Albury line this includes our two interstate passenger trains, the XPT to Sydney, which operates twice a day, and the Overland to Adelaide, which operates twice a week. Now you will have noticed these extra tracks in between all the country platforms, and these serve two main purposes. Firstly, you'll remember I said that most of these platforms are operated in two halves, so this layout allows trains on the southern parts of the platforms to pass trains on the northern parts. The second purpose, and the more traditional reason for this layout, is to allow locomotives to run around their trains. It also allows locomotives to cut off and head straight to the yard or depot for servicing, with the carriage set being shunted out separately by one of the resident Y-class shunting locos, which incidentally date from the 1960s. It's my view that V-Line really missed a big opportunity to streamline operations in the early 80s when they introduced the N and H-type carriages. If these sets had included a cab car, then the locomotives could have always stayed on one end of the train and eliminated most shunting operations at Spencer Street, and it would have allowed faster turnaround times, making more efficient use of platform space. Very few major stations around the world have such inefficient shunting moves happening on a regular basis and most medium distance loco haul trains in Europe and the United States operate with a cab car on one end. Many overseas systems also use remote control shunting units, allowing trains to be easily shunted to a yard without needing to run around or bring in a second loco. Of course, this problem isn't going to last much longer, with rail cars replacing the last loco haul trains over the next few years, but we could have streamlined these operations decades ago. While the platform separation of country and suburban trains at Southern Cross is pretty clear cut, there is one unusual exception. If we jump back to show the electrified area again, you will see there are in fact wires running into platform 8, normally a V-line platform. This is a relic from when Gippsland country trains were hauled by L-class electric locomotives up until the late 80s. Today, electric suburban trains do run in here occasionally during special events on the Flemington Racecourse line, and while this might sound simple, there are actually a bunch of unusual procedures that allow this to happen. Marcus Wong has written a blog post about it, which I'll put a link to down below. The overhead in 8 South is still in place, but not currently available for use. Back in the early 2000s, it was quite common for special electric trains to use Platform 8. Here's the preserved dog box set on what is now Platform 8B in 2003, and here's the three-car Siemens on 8 South in 2005. One last feature I wanted to point out. Back over at North Melbourne, just on the upside of the flyover, is this the North Melbourne Rail Viewing Platform, Melbourne's only place designated specifically for watching trains. It's a short walk from the station and you get a good view over the platforms, the flyover and towards Southern Cross. It's a great place for photography or to just kick back and watch the trains roll by. Thanks for watching.